In this presentation, we will take a look at a present value calculation when the terms are in the form of months rather than years. Our information will be up top. We're going to enter that in the blue area down below. So our information includes the periods, which are five months rather than five years, the amount 10,000, the rate 12%. We can, of course, do this three ways. We could use the formula, we can use the tables, and we can use Excel. The key point here is that usually when we think about periods, oftentimes it's broken out in terms of years. And usually when we see an interest rate, it's broken out in terms of years. In other words, if I was to say 12% interest, typically I wouldn't have to say per year, that would be the assumption. So the assumption is that it's per year, 12% per year. The reason we have that assumption or one reason may be that because that means that the interest rate is going to be some reasonable range here, 12%, as opposed to if we broke it down to a monthly interest rate, it would be something like 12% divided by 12, and we'd have 0.01%. So it's difficult for us to, to talk about interest rates for less than a time period because they're going to be small numbers, possibly. So typically, the default is to have that for a year. Now, if we're then thinking about an interest rate, which we say is 12% annually, but the time period we're talking about is in terms of months, not years, then we have to account for that when we do the present value. So within the present value, we'll do that with the tables. What that's going to mean usually is that we'll take the yearly rate and we'll break it down into a monthly rate. That's how we typically would do this. So we would say, all right, the periods now are going to represent months. We have five months. That's not a problem. So five months instead of five years. But now the rate, we can't go all the way out to 12%. We have to go to... Uh, 12 divided by 12 which will be one percent so we need to get to the one percent here so if we're going to use the tables then they typically if they're going to do this in a book problem would have to this is why they usually use years in a book problem if they break it down to months and use tables then they're typically going to need to use something where the interest rate will be divisible easily and uh, we can and we can then practice the months in practice of course we can do this with a formula and we can do this with any type of months uh, and the fact that the rounding won't be perfect is not a problem for us. So we're going to say, all right, this is going to be the amount of the 10,000. So we have the 10,000 in terms of the amount. Then in the table, we're looking at 1% and five periods, which represent months for us. So five periods at a 1% interest rate rather than a 12%. We, and notice that will typically be the case. We won't get proposed or the interest rate will not be given typically per month. They're going to give a yearly interest rate and we're going to have to then figure out what the monthly interest rate will be. So this is going to be from the table. And we'll say that this comes out to 0.952. So 0.952 is going to be 1. And the actually it's going to be 0.9515. So 0.9515 is 1% 5 periods. If we multiply that out then we have the 10,000 times the 0.9515 and that's going to be our total that's going to be the present value now we can also do this in excel so if we go to our formulas up top in excel i'm going to say all right formulas in excel we want the present value so i'm looking for this pv formula present value you could type it into the search field if you need to and then we're going to pick up the rate the key point within an excel reference here is that we're going to take the rate 12 percent in b4 and then divide it by 12. So notice it doesn't have to be even then because Excel will do the math for us. We're going to take that number divided by 12. And then we need the number of periods, which is going to be 5. The number of periods, note, it doesn't say year or month. It doesn't matter as long as this period lines up with the right interest rate, which it will because we're on a monthly rate at this time. And then the number of, of uh, payments is 0 because this is not an annuity. The future value then being the 10,000. So that's going to give us this amount here. So we'll say, OK. And there we have it. I'm going to flip the sign by double clicking on it, putting a negative before the P. And there we have it. So remember our formula down below, if we want to type it in this way, then would be equals negative to flip the sign present value. And then the rate is B4. Uh, so B4, 12% divided by 12. So that's the key component. We're going to divide it by 12. That'll give us the monthly rate. And then we've got the number of periods, which is in B2, 5, and then 0 for the payment. And we've got the future value, which is the 10,000.